Hi, amazing people. Welcome, 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 welcome on board. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate you, whoever's here. I can see the George family. I can also see um, um, who else is here. <laughs> I can also see Mr. Anna Boris, and uh, he's saying this will definitely be explosive or awesome. Okay, waiting patiently. Thank you all so much for coming. This is um, your favorite program. And uh, sorry about that. This is your favorite program, Health Arena. And on Health Arena, we're doing the best we can to bring you those topics, those subjects that people don't want to talk about, people are scared about, people freak out about. And we bring you medical professionals who are doing awesome, who are doing amazing in it. And we have our doctor in the house. We are super duper excited. I want us to give him a shout out in the live stream if you can clap clap if you can put just put your favorite emoji right in here and let's get to welcome our, our doctor on board hey hello uh, dog good, hi uh princess and uh um, greetings to everyone can, can you hear me i don't know if it's my um I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, that that wasn't a good one. I'm hoping that this doesn't get to be the norm for today. Okay, you can hear me. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Um. This. Okay, I thought I thought my earphones had a problem. Okay, so welcome on board and thank you for coming today. We um we all appreciate you for coming all the same because last week I learned people were all in my inbox like, what is going on? And I'm like, oh, it was an unavoidable thing that happened and there was nothing we could do about it. And I told them, you really, really wanted to come, but you just couldn't come. So um, we're glad to have you today. I'm sure um, the people will be coming in shortly and we all are going to have a great day together. So I've had a lot of questions since I started posting about this topic. So would love you to clarify a lot of things. And then um, some people think it's real. Some people think it's not. So we want you as a medical professional. Well, hey, um, they would want to know who is talking today. I, I didn't introduce you. Your name is written in the link and everything, but people will still want to get to know who is talking. So who are we talking to? Okay, it seems your mic is muted. I don't know if I'm the one who muted it or you did. Maybe you did. Okay, it's fine now. Yeah, so my name is Cho before. I'm a physician and uh, you know, I'm passionate about talking to people and using platforms like yours to reach out to so many people. And you know, I think that's what we'll be doing today and on subsequent programs. Oh, definitely. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you. And so we're just going to go straight away. We're, we're good at keeping to time and it's 10 a.m. Central Standard Time exactly. So today we're talking about this subject, painful sex. It's very sensitive. Like I said, I had lots and lots of people asking me all kinds of questions in my inbox. <laughs> it feels like when I always do um, projects or I do stories on my on my channel sometimes they are my experiences sometimes they're experiences of people but now it's the way with the passion with which I do it people are not sure if it's my experience or some other person's experience so they kind of freak out a little 
but so I had a whole lot of mixed feelings in my inbox, in my chat coming up. But the first thing we want to understand is, is there anything, is there a thing really called painful sex? Does it even exist or is it just a meat? Well, maybe we should go through the responses you got inbox, whether some people also share their, you know, their plight and their issues regarding this topic. But the short answer is yes, it exists. And let's not forget, all of the body, every organ has nerves, and we have painful stimuli. Uh, let me say we have pain sensors there. So because they exist, if something wrong goes on there, you can definitely have a, a feel of pain. So painful sex exists. Unfortunately, people don't talk about it that much. I know it's easier for a friend to pick up the phone, call you and say, hey, my leg hurts. Oh, my finger hurts. But probably nobody will call you up and say, hey, this happens. I have painful sex or maybe just put it on my phone, hurts. So that's the reason why this, which is a very, very big problem, is rather not giving that much attention and so many people suffer in silence. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. So, um, yeah. That's what I've it's difficult to talk about. So I guess now that people will have to be hiding behind several names and um, all this, you know, sometimes on social media, people don't have their perfect names, their exact names. So they're going to be able to boldly ask questions and be able to get some things clarified. So now that we've gone past the stage, painful sex is something that exists. And of course, people don't talk about it because they're scared, they're shy, and for whatever reasons. But if you have to be healthy, if you have to get the experience of everything that you have to experience, you need to be open enough to talk about it. So that's why we're talking about it today. So knowing that it exists, um, can you tell us a couple of things that could bring it about? Is it just that some people are born like that and they will just have to feel pain when they're getting into this kind of experience or some things make it happen along the line? Is it like it's something that you get from birth while you were born or is something that starts at a particular age or a particular stage? You know, how does it work? What, what could cause it? What brings it? Uh, well, you know, before I go into the possible causes, I would like to, you know, even if people don't get to ask us uh, questions today, do at least get to realize this is not something out of the ordinary. This is something experienced by many people, and they can definitely seek help, and there are ways they can be helped out there. Um, coming back to your question, we can conveniently say we have, uh, if I want to group them, I could say, you know, you have acquired causes and you have causes that you were born with. So for instance, if I want to say an acquired cause, it could be maybe down the road you have an infection. The infection is going to create a wound and you know wounds hurt. So if you have sex or you get to touch the area, you're gonna feel a pain. And then in one which wish you are born with, for instance, there are some people who are born and they have such a thick hymen that nothing can go in. There are some people who are born and they have okay. malformations with their, you know, with their, with their genital area. So from the very beginning, they are going to have issues. So one thing which really helps us to be able to make the difference when we are talking about this is, I could ask you, if you come to me and you say you have difficulties with sex, one of my common questions would be, is this something new? If say, this is the okay. very first time you are having sex and you have that problem, then it means it's probably something which was there, even though you were never having sex, and it's more likely to be something you were born with. But if you say, oh, no, I've had okay. two or three boyfriends, everything was going great, even with this 
guy, everything had been going good, and now this just started. It means it is something which is coming at that point. So along the continuum, even before you were born, maybe when you are 20, 30, 40, 50, even when you are in your 60s or 70s, you can start experiencing issues with this. And all of that information put together is going to guide us as to what is the possible, what is the probable cause, and what is it we can do to help you. Okay. So it, it varies for different people from, from what I've understood um, all about what you've said so far. It's possible that it could be because it's a first experience. So some people get that um, pain in the first experience. Some people get to acquire it along the line. I heard mm. something about the mental state that um, the mental state you're in also affects the experience. Is that? He, I would say yes to that, but you know, probably coming back to causes, there are there are so many causes. I might want to take a few and talk about them, but since you've highlighted the mental state, it's a two-way street, and I say it's a vicious cycle. So, for instance, you have a lady. Let me say you are married, and uh, each time you have sex, it's painful. So what you're going to do is you're trying, you will probably want to avoid having sex with your partner or your spouse, your significant other. Then that might create an unhealthy, you know, an unhealthy uh, family uh, milieu. Then because of that, you might find yourself getting anxious, getting depressed, and that is going to generate problems in your family. So the fact that you are unable to probably have a, a pain-free sex and have it at your convenience, and that impacts on your partner, might end up driving you both into a state of depression. But likewise, someone who is depressed is also predisposed maybe to have, to experience those symptoms more than someone who is not. So okay, when, when someone comes and says, oh, I have difficulties having sex, and maybe you also find them depressed, you need to be very careful to try to find out what caused what. Is it because they were depressed, they became aversive to having sexual intercourse? Or is it because they were having painful intercourse and then they start and that created an unhealthy milieu and they got depressed? So it goes around. But those who have mental issues, whether it's depression, it's anxiety disorder, it's post-traumatic stress disorder, they are more likely to experience such symptoms than others. And still touching on that, it might come in instances where people have what you call intimate partner uh, violence. Maybe if you have a husband or a husband who doesn't treat you right, or, you know, how hits at you or maybe humiliate you in public, then you're, you're not going to be mentally good. And when you go to such intimate things, you will be feeling the pain and such a thing can arise. And likewise, there are some people who for very unfortunate reasons, which we really don't condole, maybe they got raped or they got sexually uh, assaulted. Oh yeah, yeah. And that plays all the time in their head. So when they go to have sex, that is what is playing in their head. And they might rather experience something they experienced during the encounter, which was something horrible and they never want to deal with. And now they will keep having the pain. So this is a very diverse topic. And the reason why I try to say we are here not to say this is a cause and this is what you should do, but to let people know this is real, it's prevalent, and uh, you can get helped. If you step out there, don't feel shy about it, talk about it, talk to the physicians, they will listen to you. They will try to establish if what the problem is and they are going to tell us solutions towards it. Later on in the program, we're going to, you know, maybe highlight one or two courses and talk on. 
But the take home message today would be, no, this is a real problem. Many people suffer from it and you can get help. Oh yeah, thank you so much for that. Of course, um, that was the most important part because uh, ser seriously speaking, lots of people wrote to me and they were like, does it even exist? And so to speak, Christians were like, did God not create this to be beautiful? Yes, he created it to be beautiful, but there are several reasons. And when you were talking about the incidents of rape, that was the first thing that got to my mind. A lot of people shy away totally from sex because they had been raped before. And so that experience is not a beautiful one in their minds. That picture is stuck in their minds or they need to go through some therapy or something to get healed to be really, really healed before they can get into all these scenarios. And if you get in a relationship with that kind of person, their state of mind is not just perfect, especially if they've not been able to tell you about whatever they went through for one reason or the other. It's not easy to talk about those things sometimes, but with an understanding of what they've gone through before in their lives, it makes it better for people to be able to treat them better. So if your partner has been through the situation, you'll be understanding enough to know exactly what to do and all that. So a lot of people were really surprised that we're bringing up that kind of subject. And it felt like they were surprised that it exists. Wow. Like I and, and I was really surprised. Yeah. Like I mentioned, it exists. And every part of the body has pain sensors. And then yeah. you can feel pain just from anywhere. And the vagina and the genital mm -hmm. area is not excluded. So yes, it exists. Oh yeah. Fact, at least one in four women suffer from this problem. And that is a gross underestimation because people don't talk about it. People oh. don't support it. So oh my if God. After one, in four women reports this problem with all the stigma, um, the uneasy feeling around it, you can only dare imagine how many would really report it if it were that simple to just talk about. Wow. Yeah, so the, the, the thing we're really encouraging people right now is to be able to talk about it. Um, see your, like, like um, the, the, our doctor is saying, see your physician and talk about it. You really need to talk about it if you have to get help. And like he said, there's several courses and every course will definitely have a different kind of solution. Just like we're talking, some might need you to go for therapy. Some might need you to go for several things as he's going to give us the solutions today. But just like he said, the most important thing is that you should know it exists. So don't feel bad. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel like you're cursed. Yeah, that's what some people would think that they're cursed or something. And that's why they are afraid of this. And this has also led to, um, a lot of broken relationships, broken marriages and stuff like that, because the the either the woman or the man is complaining like, oh, the woman is not in the mood. She's always not in the mood. She is this, she's that. Each time she's complaining, she doesn't want this or she doesn't want that. Of course, if she's feeling pain and she really can't talk about it, the only way she's going to be able to make you hear her is by not wanting to do anything which is very tricky. So we want to get um, our doctor to tell us. I also read, while, while, while we're going to talk about this topic, I read about something. It's like the hormones in your bodies that are secreted based on your state of mind. Is that also, I, I, I think that was a course, but I didn't understand exactly how it works. How does that actually work and how does it relate to um, getting painful sex? Well, thanks for bringing that up. You know, just like, what, so when you think of, uh, if, when you think of sex in the traditional way, it's like, 
it's like an object moving moving around another or is moving into another how you want however you want to put it and if you remember what okay. they talk about in terms of frictional forces so if there is enough oh yeah if there is enough lubrication then there would be no friction and if there is no friction there's less resistance and you're not going to generate that much force oh, yeah. or cause pain or heat in in, in in other terms. But then if there is no lubrication, just if there's no lubrication, then there's going to be resistance. The movement cannot be smooth. It's going to be difficult. And that in itself is going to cause pain. So if you've ever had a door, maybe that doesn't just slide easily. You get some grease and you put there. What does that do? It now slides easily because yeah. you've use the frictional mm -hmm. force. So it's the same thing which happens during sex. So like the foreplay of sex is very important because that it, in turn, that like informs the body and everything that I would subsequently get into this stage. And the body, because it loves protecting itself, it produces hormones. Not really call these substances or hormones which are going to make sure you get well lubricated. So girls can tell you that, oh, I'm wet. Uh, I'm, and when, when you are wet, it means you are ready. It means this is something you are in the mood okay. of doing. And if you are in such a state, then the penetration or the trusting is going to be smooth and you will not feel pain. But let's say you rush the foreplay and you were not ready. Or let's say you are mentally not there. Maybe when someone is getting raped and they are not there, they are not going to get any, they are not going to get well lubricated. And what that does is if somebody forcefully penetrates at that time, there is so much resistance and it's going to come alongside. Mm -hmm. So often when you see people who were raped, you always find them with injuries. They have lacerations, they have tears, they oh, are yeah. bleeding. The reason they are bleeding is not because maybe they use a super big object to rape them with. It's simply because they are not ready. Instead of the muscles relaxing, instead of them secreting enough, uh, uh, enough so, uh, instead of them having enough secretions to lubricate the passage, everything went the other way around. And all of that is to say, I'm not ready for this. But because the other partner forced his way through, it causes all of that damage. So that is where the real problem is. So, and so talking more about this, I, would, I just want to link it up to the young women and the old women. Because with the young women, okay. we, have, we have what we call estrogens. If you... If you've not reached your menopause, yeah, if you are not in menopause, which means you still get to see your periods every month or stuff like that, then you have estrogens. And what estrogen does is it keeps the vagina and its lining in a healthy state, the glands that are going to secrete in a healthy state. So you will really not have these issues. But when you move into menopause, you no longer have that many that much estrogens to ensure that all of this is going on. And you can easily find yourself oh. not, not getting enough uh, lubrication like you should have done before. Uh, just the fact that you no longer have estrogens, it means the carbon is not as maintained as it should have been in the past. So now you have uh, a fragile area with less lubrication, then sex can easily get painful. And even in women who are not yet in menopause, if you're taking medications which counteract the actions of estrogens, you will find yourself in such a state yeah. where you will, where, yeah, where you will not have enough lubrication. The, the mucosa, what we call the lining, is not going to be that healthy or thick enough to provide the protection, and intercourse can become painful. So these are all things 
we know the exit. So when you have difficulties with intercourse, whether you're 20, you're 50, you're 60, you're 80, just talk about it because your problem could be something that can be solved easily. There are some which need some detailed work for it to be addressed, but there are also some that could be solved, you know, very easily. Okay, wow, that that's really interesting. So um, based on age as well, based on what level you are at, there might be difficulties. Okay, that one freaked me out. The one about even being young and because of some drugs you're taking, uh, there's a lot going on with especially young ladies and not wanting to get pregnant and stuff like that. So they're delving into whatever they shouldn't be delving into. And so they try not to get pregnant and all these um, pills they take back could actually hurt them, right? From what you just explained right now, I think. Well, I think most of the medications women will have access to in terms of whether they are birth control pills, they would not cause that. Medications which will most likely cause that are uh, in most cases, they are more of, uh, I would say they are prescription medications and your doctor will talk to you about okay. if you're probably going to experience it. But I also say this with reserve uh, because not every country requires prescription for some of the most <laughs> unsafe medications. But yeah, their birth okay. control will not cause that. Birth controls will not cause that. What birth controls okay. really do is they let you live your life the way you want to live, but they try to interfere with the process of everything that would have led to you becoming pregnant. But they don't interfere with your hormones in the sense of lubrication and you having a, having, a, having a hurting mucosa and sex. So we are talking of more toxic medications uh, other than that. Okay. Thank you so much for um, this possible cause. The first thing we've understood is that painful sex does exist, and we're hearing several causes um, of several reasons why people get to experience that. And there, I've heard some ones that are really hurting. And of course, I think basically it has a lot to do with with why some people don't just want to get the experience anymore, why some people shy away from it, why some people um, feel as much pain as they do when it happens. And so they don't want to talk about it and they don't want to um, get involved in the experience. So you can still go ahead and ask the doctor questions in the comment section or in the chat if you need to ask any question or anything you want him to clarify you on. And of course, we're definitely going to put a contact detail if you would want to get to the doctor as well. And you can also get to me on Instagram or in uh, uh, LinkedIn or whatever social media platform you want to get on with me. In the description box, you're going to see all the links to my social media platforms. You can get to us from there and would we'll answer your questions. And like we also say on Health Arena, what we do is those topics that are scary, those topics that are freaking people out, those topics that are like taboos in our lives, that's what our doctors are going to be addressing here because there's no need for us to be coming up here when we're just talking things that we feel like we want to talk about. We want to talk things that are really the things you want to know about and it can help you in one way or the other. So we are coming again and we're getting back to our doctor and we want to ask him, I don't know if some people have asked questions in the comment section. I'm going to be checking that shortly. And also we're coming back to our doctor. So what are the possible solutions? Well, friend, we've learned that painful sex is real. It happens and it's not a myth. It's a real thing and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be to be um, looked into and all that. So what are some of the possible solutions you would give for people who experience this? Because you, I, I'm basically, I learned from the first time you were talking that you have to see a physician to be sure. 
what it is. So after seeing the physician, what are some of the things you think your physician might tell you for some of the courses that we already know? Well, like I said, there are so many courses and there is no one solution to so okay. many courses. The most oh, important yeah. thing is to, you know, the most important thing is to pin down what that problem is. For instance, if the problem is inadequate for play, then the okay. solution is hey, you guys have to, you know, you can't just rush things. You need some time for preparation and make sure things are good. And you can listen to your body as a lady to know whether you are ready or not, because it's very clear. So, and you know, if it's a problem with a, maybe for play or inadequate uh, sex technique. It could be something like this. In the last relationship, I never had issues with sex. Everything was going great. Then I just met this guy and nothing has worked. Why, has some, why is it that you were having everything so good until you meet somebody else and things no longer go good? Then we have to examine that relationship to see what is it. Is it an inadequate sex technique? What is going on? It could also be someone who, you know, you've been in marriage, everything has been going great, and then suddenly you say, oh, I'm having a painful intercourse. That might be the early signs to show that marriage is not working. Something is wrong. Maybe you stay there, but emotionally you're not there. Uh, there are issues in the marriage you guys need to address. So you'll probably say, if things have been going good and this doesn't work, then we need to examine this relationship. So when you're examining the relationship, other things you also want to pay attention to is, for instance, the other one who had a new boyfriend, you might have had an infection. So you meet a new guy, maybe you had unprotected sex, now you develop an infection. Just like when you have an infection, anywhere it hurts. If you also have an infection, anywhere in the genital area or the organs around that area, it is going to hurt. So we would need to talk to you, examine or are there other things linked to this relationship? Are there things linked to the organs you use for sex? Are there issues linked to the other organs around the area that needs to be addressed? And I say other, uh, other organs around the area because if you know where your bladder sits, it sits just, uh, it's very close to the vagina. And during sex, there's no way you can avoid having contact with the bladder. So if the blood has an infection and somebody is pressing on it, then you're going to experience pain. Just like when someone has a bladder infection and comes to the office, when I palpate in the pelvic area over the bladder, you say it hurts. So if that were a sexual encounter, you're also going to feel the pain. Wow. But you need to go express yourself and say, I have this problem. The doctor will talk with you and try to look for common things. Common things are always common. Relationship related issues. It could be an infection. And if it's an infection, what type of infection is it? Then your treatment is going to be tailored. But don't get me wrong. And some people after doing all of this, we might never identify what the problem is. But that is not what happens in the majority of people. In most people, there is a cause. And the solution mm -hmm. depends on what we're going to find. So I'll pause, I'll pause a little so that if you have some other things to say, you could, but if there are no other things, I can elaborate on many other possible scenarios and how we can approach them. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to just check in the comment section to see if anybody asked the question. So we'll just tell them that they should hold on a little while. We'll get you when you're done so that your flow should be consistent. When you're done, then we're going to get to get them to do everything. Okay. So we're going to be handing over to Dr. Pachobo for uh, here learning. So I'm actually handing over to you right now. <laughs> you're taking over the show. And then um, when you're done, if many more people come on with some questions, I can see people are saying this is serious. Oh my goodness. This is interesting. Okay. So I'm sure people are learning and they're, by the time we're done with this live stream, we'll probably have had a lot to say. Thank you to Dr. Dita, of course. So over to you, Doc. Uh, the podium is all yours. Thank you. I'm not used to having the... Yeah, so... Well, probably, you know, just continuing to talk about painful sex and other experiences. I just want people to feel comfortable expressing themselves when it comes to this and knowing that there are so many causes. So I wouldn't be focus on saying this is what you do and this is what you don't do. I just want you to reach out and talk to the experts in the field. They will work with you and get uh, possible solutions. But one other thing I want to talk touch on now is um, what we call a pelvic inflammatory disease. Uh, and commonly we call it PID. So, you know, you as a lady, you could have an infection in one of your genital organs. It could be the tubes, it could be the ovaries, and it could even be in the uterus itself. And because that organ is so close to the vagina, during trusting, you're going to feel pain. Let's say you feel this pain, and your decision is rather not to talk about it, to keep away from sex. What happens is you may no longer feel the pain, but the infection continues to cause damage to your body and to the reproductive organs. And later on in life, you may actually, you may get married and you say, oh, I want to have a child. Then somebody tells you, well, you have difficulties getting a child because the tubes are blocked or something crazy, the tubes are blocked and you can't have a child. You start asking yourself, but how did it come about? Well, it came about because you had pain. We should have alerted you, had you spoken to a physician or a heart practitioner, that something, is, something wrong is happening. You would have made an early diagnosis and you would have been treated. And that way you would have avoided the pain and all the challenges that come along when you when you are when you're facing these difficulties having a child. So when you experience pain during sex, you have to get it addressed. There are moments pain during sex in elderly women could signal there is an inf there is say a growth there is a there's a growth or there's cancer going on and just by reporting that you have pain somebody is going to pay close attention to you and get this addressed and uh, you know with especially with the young girls when you experience pain Pain shouldn't be part of your life. And pain shouldn't stop you from doing the things you enjoy. So if you experience pain, step out there. Report it to physicians, healthcare practitioners. And there is one thing I want you to realize that whatever you tell a physician even after your death would not be revealed to anyone else. 
And I remember one of my patients who came and asked me a very trivial question, who said, oh, my sister also sees you as a doctor. I said, oh yeah, who is that? He gave me the name of the patient and I knew the patient so well. And I knew exactly how well that patient was doing with her illness. And he said, is she getting her diabetes well controlled? And my response was simple. You are not private to that information. I would not discuss that with you. This is to tell you, if I can disclose very basic things, such as letting someone know whether the sister's diabetes is well controlled or not. I am not going to tell someone you came to my office and reported you have painful sex. In fact, it's part of the profession that whatever you discuss with your physician, it's a secret and it remains a secret. And for the next person to know anything about it, you need to give a clear consent, authorization, stating I authorize you to discuss this. And you can limit it just to one topic or whatever you want to discuss with that person. So don't be shy out there. Make sure you go to the appropriate people, discuss your problems, because they are going to use this information and the more they're going to gather by talking to you, examining you, and maybe requesting for some laboratory tests or imaging studies to pin down what the problem is. And that is going to save you from so much pain. You don't want to know what painful sex has done to marriages, broken marriages, broken homes, children suffering. You don't want to think about the mental, the mental challenges. People who are unable to execute maybe part of the fundamental uh, duty activities of every human being go through. So you definitely want to get these things addressed. Most of them would come up with why you have it and there would be solutions. Not too many would go without solutions. And at the end of the day, someone is going to make the pain lighter if they can't take it entirely away. So step out, speak up. If people can talk of me too, then people should be able to say, I also feel pain during an uh, intercourse. Okay, so. So I realize you're back in the studio and I don't know whether you have, you know, some contribution or some questions to put in. Maybe you're muted because I can't get you. You might be muted. Oh yeah. I'm back. Yeah, so you were on mute. Oh, yeah. You couldn't hear. Can... Can you hear? Oh, my God. This ain't happening. Can you? Oh, my. Okay. Okay, so uh, um, one of the most important things I've actually heard, oh, bienvenue, Monsieur Papi, you know, bienvenue. 
Okay, so one of the things I learned from all what you were saying was um, talk about the pain as soon as possible to worse things that would have been addressed if you spoke about it from the start. And yes, that's it. it's basically like I would say all of this topic brings us to the fact that you need to talk about it when you wrote things. Just like you said, a lot of marriages have been broken and it has led a lot of people into a lot of on pleasant situations that would not have been probably if they were able to talk about it. So just like you said, um, nobody's gonna be privy to that information except the person who wants someone to be privy to it. So for example, um, in the case of people that might have to go through therapy, people who, were, um, who have, they're depressed or something, maybe that's what is causing them for their bodies not to be able to screen their home, um, their, things that they need to secrete and all that. If that's what the person is going through, then their partner needs to know. So it means you would definitely have to find a way probably to talk with the partner or talk with the person to accept that the the, the partner and them have to go through that therapy together. Because just like you're explaining something about foreplay, it has to be two people who do it. So the other person is supposed to be privy to the fact that this person needs maybe a longer time, not the obvious time that he, he is used to or something, to be able to get to that stage where they're going to be well lubricated for their their experience not to be a painful one, you know. So I love that part where you spoke about, talk about it as soon as possible so that it doesn't lead to other things. And of course, you said in some older people, even some younger people these days, you know, people have some growths, they have some things in, in their bodies, and that's what is giving them that experience. So they need to look into it. So as soon as you notice it, go to your physician and tell your physician, this is what is happening. And they'll definitely know what can help. And just like you said, it might not be a total thing, like total pain away, but it might be less pain and it might be less trouble as well. Considering the fact that some of these infections could actually lead to destroying a, a tube or womb or something like that, just like you said, it's really scary. So we really need to talk about it. Thank you so much, Dr. Dita, for this amazing, amazing, amazing. I knew you were gonna deliver perfectly. So I wasn't so worried when you didn't come the last time even though people are worried. And we're glad that you came today. And we have people in the chat who have just been saying awesome, interesting, my goodness. Uh, I, I didn't know this is, <laughs> you know. So. Yes, yeah, so, so. Yeah, we're saying always that that if you have any professionals, like Dr. Dita said, if it's something that is not like his, his thing that he can talk about, he's going to make it possible for one of his colleagues to come on and talk about it. So you all, don't freak out. We got you covered. So yeah, Dr. Dita, what are the, um, the last things you wanna say? Well, I want to first of all thank everybody listening to us. If you're here, it's because you want to know what the truth is. And I hope by listening to us, you'll be okay. able to help others. It's like my network is giving me a hard time. Let us know when you are on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Bestie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bestie Boys of Kevin, for coming in. We're talking today about painful sex, and it has been a great time on the show. We're hoping that for next 
Oh yeah, we're hoping that for the next month, we're um, we're going to be able to bring you another interesting topic. And uh, if you send us other topics and we see how urgent or how important they are, we can actually swap topics. Like we said, our desire on Health Arena is to bring you all the things that are going to help you so that you can stay healthy and get wealthy. If you're not healthy, you can do the things you need to do to get the wealth you need. So on Health Arena, our slogan is, my health, my wealth, of course. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you, Dr. Dita, for taking out time. This is a beautiful Sunday morning. You could have been any place else, but you decided to come and be a blessing and create impact in the life of amazing people on here. And to you who was listening, thank you so, so very much. I really appreciate you. And a good way to say thank you to the doctor in the house is by sharing this. You just don't know who needs this. You just don't know who might stumble upon this and it might change their lives forever. You could save families. You could save, um, get you on the next episode of Health Arena, which is going to be the last sunday of the month of july we're hoping it's either the last sunday of the month of july or the first sunday of the month of august so we're going to be bringing you another very interesting topic and it's something that people need to take into consideration and be very i'm not gonna let but i'm sure you all are gonna be here again same time health arena always happens on sunday except we have a change we're going to let you all know it always happens on sunday at 10 a.m central standard time always on sunday 10 a.m central standard time yes but if anything comes up we're definitely going to let you know in time <laughs> bestie i'll make sure it doesn't get to fall on your birthday <laughs> i'll make sure it doesn't fall on your birthday so thank you everyone i always get to say i love you so so very much but god loves you way, way more get to like share subscribe to social media platforms and send me your questions your um topics and subjects you want us to talk about and that's exactly what we're going to be dealing with thank you so much dr Dieter. i hope everybody in the chat can say a big thank you to dr Dieter before we're signing out can we see the thank you <laughs> okay, I can see some people saying, um, thank you, great team. Nice meeting you, Doug. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And this other person says, this is very enlightening. Thank you. I'm glad that it was enlightening for you. And who else is going on? Okay, we can see the thank yous. So thank you, everyone. This is where we're wrapping up for today. If you had a great time, stay fit, stay safe, have a beautiful week ahead of you. And this is where we're wrapping up. Bye, everybody.